Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Tech Talk Show with me, Kazim and Adnan. Today, Adnan and I are going to be recording this special episode for Microsoft's Learn Learning Up to recap some of the exciting announcements from this year's Ignite. Uh, my name is Kazim. Uh, what's up, Adnan? Hi, Kazim. Doing well. Just so much new things coming from Microsoft this past week. But, but Adnan, Ignite uh, was in person last year and also this year. So I want to start by getting your take on which is better. Is it better to be there in person or attend remotely? Well, well, personally, Kazim, it's uh, for me, it's always better to be there in person, you know, seeing uh, new and old friends and also especially those product teams at Microsoft. And I can tell you, unfortunately, I couldn't make it, you know, feeling bad about it. But I was following all the news uh, live from uh, my home. So it meant like late nights. Uh, unfortunately, I had a lot of work uh to do, which is one of the reasons I couldn't go. But I, I hope to be the next time. Um, I think one of the cool things of also attending remotely is that um, you have a better grasp of some of these new announcements. It's easier for you to catch up with them. Uh, you know, you can easily tune to the session that catches your interest. Yes, I know, just like you've mentioned, there are some other cool benefits that come to it being there in person. You know, so you can get to network, meet with old friends and some of those other good stuff. But but, but Adnan, it, it's really sad, right, for me in person that I've mm -hmm. never attended, uh, you know, any of the Ignite uh, events in person. So I'm also hoping that next year I can be there in person, Adnan. Oh, definitely, man. You know, uh, some a goal for both of us because I used to present at Microsoft Ignite uh, when we still used to have these live multi-day uh, conferences uh, all over the world. And it was always uh, the most important event uh, of the year. And just like this past uh, few days, it, it still is, uh, although in a smaller format. But um, it's it's always been my guide and direction for um you know the future direction that the work and the technology is taking us yeah, yeah and i've i've been with microsoft now you know i've got a relationship with microsoft for 28 years so uh <laughs> it's still going strong kazim yeah that's getting close to three decades at night so so at that microsoft has unveiled some game-changing innovations you know this year's ignite and we're just going to jump into some of these new announcements. Of course, it's impossible to cover all of the announcements, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll just be focusing on some of the uh, Azure and AI announcements. So let's start with you, Adnan. We'll start mm -hmm. with Azure first, and we can look at AI next. So Adnan, which of the announcements caught your attention? Well, to, to start off with, you know, we, we're in the AI generation now, Kazim. It it's took us a while, like you said, three decades almost. And uh, for me, uh, firstly, Microsoft still being a game changer with uh, bringing out their own Microsoft hardware, those new uh, designed for AI workloads uh, processes like the Maya 100. Today, we're announcing our first fully custom in-house AI accelerator, Azure Maya. <laughs> Starting with Maya 100, designed to running cloud AI workloads like LLM training and inference. This chip is manufactured on a five nanometer process, has 105 billion transistors, make it, making it one of the largest chips uh, that can be made with current technology. And it goes beyond the chip, though. You know, we have designed Maya 100 as an end-to-end -end rack for AI, as you can see right here. Uh, AI power demands require infrastructure that is dramatically different from other clouds. The compute workloads are, you know, require a lot more cooling as well as their networking density. Um, and we have designed the cooling unit known as the sidekick to match the thermal profile of 
the chip and added rack level closed loop liquid cooling for higher efficiency. This architecture allows us to take this rack and put it into existing data center infrastructure and facilities rather than building new ones. And then, yeah. like I said, AI generation. So we need to, if you're not busy with AI yet, in some way, form or the other. Uh, yeah. On the one side, you want to create your own AI, personalized to your own business using your own data. So the nice thing, uh, since I'm already dabbling in creating and making AI, uh, Microsoft made it easier with their own AI platform, the Microsoft AI Studio. So th with that, you can tie into machine learning models and you can go and design, build, test, create your own AI on the Azure um, platform with AI Studio. And then for me, I would say you've mentioned one of the hardware, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That uh, you mentioned the Azure Maya. And uh, I know Azure Cobalt was also announced. Azure Cobalt was the first CPU designed by Microsoft. And uh, it's tailored to run general purpose compute workloads, you know, in the Azure, in the Microsoft Cloud. Thrilled to introduce our very first custom in-house CPU series, Azure Cobalt, starting with Cobalt 100. <laughs> Cobalt is the first CPU designed by us specifically for the Microsoft Cloud. And this 64-bit, 128-core ARM-based chip is the fastest of any cloud provider. And uh, one thing I also like is that Microsoft don't just talk the talk, right? So they also, they believe so much in their product that they use it themselves, right? In fact, they start to use it themselves before throwing it out that, you know, for the customers to use. So they're mm -hmm. using it already to power Teams and, uh, you know, Azure SQL. And uh, we also saw from uh, Nadella's mm. uh, announcement yesterday is that it's going to be available to the customers in 2024 so yeah. that's next year it's almost here yes a lot of new things to look at in the coming year you know so all those previews that are out uh, the hardware that's going to be available soon uh, really looking forward to that and some of the things that you know that that i also like if we if we're moving further in so we already have that little AI Studio platform to help developers, right? Now, what if you're an end user? We already have the AI that's built into almost every Microsoft product, if not every Microsoft product out there. It's just going to make it better. So what are your yeah. thoughts on uh, all the co-pilots uh, that are available, uh, Kazim? What's your uh, favorite? Well, well, for the co-pilot, I think uh, I'd say my favorite is the old beam that we all know uh, is now co-pilot. I mean, that's, that's big. Bing chat is now co-pilot. It's a standalone destination and it works wherever you are, on Microsoft Edge, on Google Chrome, on Safari, as well as mobile apps coming to, soon to you. Our enterprise version, which adds commercial data protection, is also now Copilot. You simply log in with your Microsoft Entra ID to access it. It'll be available at no additional cost to all eligible Entra ID users. And uh, you know, when, when we say Copilot, what is Copilot really? I mean that this year's announcement is mostly about Copilot at night, right? So Copilot makes it really easy for people to get their work done. So it's like having a digital assistant that is assisting you with not, work. Not just digital yeah. assistant, Kazim, a digital yeah. expert. Think about it. <laughs> a normal user with one of you or me right next door, you could say, and they just ask in normal language, you know, uh, what do I need to do if I have X or Z, and what is the outcome of something if I have this scenario? You know, so it's going to be a big game changer already. A lot of people that are already on the platform and using the co-pilots, they can't do without. So it's just going to improve uh, productivity. 
it's going to make people uh, almost superhuman Kazim, especially in my field. And like my favorite co-pilot is the security co-pilot. So I deal with uh, like a lot of security on day to day and having uh, looked at it and played with it for, for a while, it's really a game changer. Normal language, you can just um, talk to the co-pilot and prompt it with, you know, just show me specific security incidents, give me more information, um, have a look at where things aren't configured uh, optimally or correctly, and you just get the feedback. And uh, co-pilot, by the way, isn't just for the techie people, right? So it's not nope. only for the security guys, it's not only for the IT pro guys. So I also heard uh, Natya said yesterday that there's also co-pilot for sales, right? Co-pilot for service or for services. So Microsoft now is really making it very easy for people to even make more sales. In fact, we're already using this pattern to extend co-pilot across every role and function. Uh, for developers, GitHub Copilot is turning natural language into programming language, helping them code 55 times faster. Uh, for, for SecOps, um, teams, Copilot is helping them respond to threats at machine speed. In fact, this week we're adding plugins for identity management, endpoint security, for risk and compliance managers as well. For sellers, Copilot is right there helping you close more deals, whether you're in responding uh, in email or in a Teams meeting, you can enrich that customer interaction by grounding the Copilot with your CRM data, whether it's in Salesforce or Dynamics 365. And for customer service teams, today we are very excited to announce Copilot for service to help agents resolve, cap, or, you know, resolve the cases faster. And exactly. the best thing, Kazim, yeah. The, uh, the Copilot's already built into all the Microsoft uh, pr products that's been announced. You'll be able to go and create your own. Wow. Based that, on your own data and tailor made it with the Copilot <laughs> Studio. We're announcing Copilot Studio. You know, with Copilot Studio, you can build custom GPTs, create new plugins, orchestrate workflows, monitor, in fact, your Copilot performance, manage your customizations, and much, much more. It comes with a bunch of pre built plugins to incorporate your own business data, as well as from applications such as SAP, Workday, ServiceNow. Uh, it can connect to databases, custom backends, legacy systems that may even be on premise. All of this allows you to extend Copilot with capabilities unique to your organization and the systems you use every day. You mentioned the AI Studio, right? But mm -hmm. perhaps for people who aren't familiar uh, with AI Studio, wondering what AI Studio is all about. I believe people have heard about the mm -hmm. Open AI. So there's open AI or Azure Open AI Services. Yeah. So Azure Open AI Services comes bundled with features to include ChatGPT4. There's ChatGPT4 Turbo with Vision. There's mm -hmm. DALI 3 and fine tuning, Adnan. So that was also announced. I mean, what people used to know is ChatGPT. Uh, we had ChatGPT 3.5. We've had ChatGPT4. So now mm -hmm. we're having ChatGPT4 Turbo, Adnan. Well, it's all about, you know, generative AI. So the multimodal mo models, uh, AI models that you as a developer can go and tap into to go and create your own AI. Soon you'll be able to connect GPT-4 Turbo with Vision to Azure AI Vision, allowing you to prompt with video images and text. In fact, our customer WPP is already using uh, this today with one of their largest clients. I mean, take a look at the video behind me. Pretty amazing to see video prompts as inputs and with summaries coming out on the other end. It's fantastic to see it. And um, as somebody that's already been using the open AI uh, services, it's just so much new advancements that, you know, we could spend days just talking about all the specific details you know, how they've managed to uh, simplify and advance prompting. Uh, prompting. So uh, a, a lot of, you know, too many to mention 
personal voice, text-to-speech, avatars. Uh, the, the future looks bright. Perhaps, uh, Adnan, I'm thinking we can wrap up with this now. That Microsoft partnership with NVIDIA. I mean, the announcement yesterday, you know, the partnership is really a huge one. What's your take on the partnership? Well, there's, 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 ooh, there's just so much to mention. At, at the first thing, there's a lot of new um, virtual machine sizing available. Also looking into confidential computing, where the whole NVIDIA GPU H100 uh, also ties into. Where, you know, um, things like your uh, CPU, GPU data is more secure much more uh, things that we can talk about for for hours, Kazim. Yes. But we can leave but, that for another episode. Yes, for, for sure, Adnan. But for people who want to really learn more, Adnan, uh, where, where can they find more details about some of these announcements? Well, a lot of the new announcements are available on the Microsoft Ignite uh, website. So you go to uh, news.microsoft.com. There's the uh, where we always use the Ignite 2023 book of news with all the latest announcements. And um, there's also on Microsoft Learn a lot of the new features and functionality that's available on Azure. So, so a lot of those documentation will be related to those uh, specific technical uh, features. And then also um, on the normal Microsoft blogs, the tech community sites. So so any last words from you, Adnan, before uh, we say bye bye now? Last words is also um, keep an eye out for our next episode. We'll be continuing our series on Azure and security, and obviously a lot of these new uh, features and things that we haven't covered today, will be continuing in uh, covering in continuous uh, episodes. Make sure to follow my YouTube channel and my Microsoft Learn channel for more updates. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and let's know what you're most excited about, uh, you know, this year's uh, announcement at Ignite in the comment section down below. So on that note, it's a bye-bye now from myself and Adnan, and we'll see you again another time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.